Okay, so recently I did a video on YOLO cam, which is the AI camera, but for me it was running a bit too slow, and that's because the camera I was using, the Rev 2.1 version, is too high a resolution for the AI software on a Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, I ordered a 1.3 camera, but what turned up does say 1.3, but this is the Noir camera, which is the no infrared camera, which is designed more for low light situations. And uh, I only paid a fiver for it, so I said to the seller I'd keep it anyway. And unfortunately, the other one he had, he'd already sold. So I've got to order another one of those to play around with that AI software. I initially thought this camera was faulty, and I'll show you why. Uh, so first of all, I'll show you the version 2.1 on my Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And let's show that on a Pi 4 in the browser. So let's open up a browser and go to 192.168.1.145. And you can see this is my motion eye camera. And you can see the color on that screen looks pretty natural. But if I switch to the Noir camera, you can see the results are very pink. And I did try it in loads of different software uh, before I did a bit more research uh, because I've never, I've seen them on the much newer cameras, but I'd not seen the older variants of these. I can't remember them coming out, but not to worry. I've, I'm gonna probably use it as a security camera anyway. So it'll be quite good that at night uh, it copes well with lower lights. I might do some testing on that as well. The reason I'm doing this video is because I've been told about some new software. And that software is called RPI-CAM-Web-Interface. Looks like it's been updated fairly recently in July. This project has been going since 2013, and I guess this is possibly why I didn't... I, I don't think I've come across this at all. I can't remember seeing this. But all the information is in here, so I thought I'd have a play around and, uh, and give it a go. So let's download Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, it does talk about having to enable some things in Bullseye, so I might use the legacy version. Uh, let's give that a try and maybe there's less to do so choose os raspberry pi os other and there we go raspberry pi os legacy choose storage i've got an sd card so let's pop that in and hit write and yes and while that's writing i need to shut down motion ios uh, and you can do that from this menu uh, if you're not logged in it only gives you a few different options so you want to sign in and then you get a load more options. So let's shut that down. Okay, so that's all written to the SD card. I was just having to look through the information while I was waiting for it. There's so much information here. View stop and restart a live preview with low latency and high frame rate. Control camera settings like brightness, contrast, etc. live. Record full HD videos and save them on the SD card. Do timed or continuous video recording. Single or multiple time lapse. Preview, download and delete save videos. Trigger captures by motion detection. Trigger captures by many scheduling possibilities. Circular buffer to capture actions leading up to a motion detection. Control pan, tilt or Pi light. Shut down reboot from your Pi. Shut down reboot your Pi from the web interface. And it also supports two cameras when used to the compute module. Obviously you need a board that's got two camera outputs. I mean, I'm sure one of my cameras is gonna work. So I'm just gonna try, I would imagine the 2.1 one to start off with. Anyway, uh, I couldn't see what Pies it supported. Because it's since 2013, it probably works well with older Pies. But I can't see what Pies it supports. There's so much information in here. Really, really detailed. Yeah, I think I'm going to start off on the Raspberry Pi 4 just because it's going to be faster. So let's shut this down. And I've been running the operating system from this USB hub. This is an Oroco USB hub. And uh, it's just really handy because it's separately powered, so it's not really taking much power from the Pi. Um, but also you can run an operating system, switch things in and out without having to you know, go through the fiddly sockets on the Pi. So let's unplug that because that's just finished. And I'm going to boot it from the SD card that's already in there. And let's plug in the camera. So uh, we need to go... So this side, which is the one with the contacts on, needs to go away from the black. So let's pop that one in and push them down. And then let's just go with the camera 2.1. And same again, so the terminals are away from the black or the blue is against the black. Right, that's connected. Let's switch on. Okay, so I put the camera on a little mount for now. Okay, so let's go back to that site 
And let's open a terminal and just have a look and see if anything works with the camera without doing anything at all. So I've got libcamera dash hello, which isn't recognized, but this is the legacy version. So let's try Raspberry still. Okay, so cannot read camera. So let's see what it says in here. I'm sure it's just Raspberry config that needs to configure the camera. Yeah, sudo Raspberry config. Move this over to the side. So interfacing options, you can see here, enable camera, and yes. Pretty sure I need to restart. Actually, let's try it without a restart and see what happens. Yeah, still not there. So let's try reboot. So control alt T to open the terminal again and Raspberry still. Yeah, that's working fine. That will take a photo now, and you can see me in the reflection. And that photo will come up here. Uh, there you go, test JPEG. So if I open that, perfect. So let's follow the rest of the instructions to uh, get this installed. So let's update. And let's clone this. So paste that in. It says for pre-buster versions, well I'm running Bullseye so there's no worries about that. And here's the install. And hit return. One newly installed. So cam subfolder, auto start, yes. Server Apache, web port 80. Let's take a photo of that in case I need anything later. Okay, let's just go with okay. 29.2 megabytes. So start camera system now, let's say yes. Okay, I guess that means it's running. Okay, so I'm gonna use Fing on my iPad to find the IP address. I quite like it as an app. And let's refresh that. So there's a Raspberry Pi there, 192.168.1.178. So what did it say on that site? So use it here. So let's copy that and paste it in. But then I need to change this to 192.168.1.178, I think it was. Let's go back to thing just to double check. Yeah, 178. Uh, port 80 I had. And subfolder, if I go back to my picture I took, uh, it defaulted to HTML, so I guess it's that. And hit return. And there's my camera. If I hold my hand, oh, it's responsive as well. Yeah, it does actually work quite quickly. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And the frame rate looks pretty decent as well. Record video start. Record video stop. Record image. Time lapse start. Time motion detection start. Let's give that a try. Try and stay still, it might pick up my reflection. Yeah, it started recording. This is cool. Download videos and images. So you can actually access the images from this. Uh, so if I go download videos and images, they're already there. So one of those is a still, must be the 435 kilobyte. See the busy one is still recording. Let's go for that video and play that back. Yeah, that's excellent. Gosh, so it's, it's really nice and responsive as well. I can't believe I've not used this in all this time. So camera settings, that's my iPad you can see in the corner there. Camera settings, 1920 by 1080. Video split. Oh, this is very cool. Look how much information you can change. Motion settings. Motion vector preview, and then system, MJPEG stream, simple on, shutdown system, reboot system, reset, very impressive. Yeah, that is, that's really nice, and it's nice that it's fast as well, and it's very responsive. So if I now shut down my Pi, and plug in my solar power bank, you can see the red lights come on, so it's starting to boot. 
and the green light. Launch my dope display laptop. Actually, let's use this intent mode. Plug in my station PC with USB-C. Got to get the right socket. And plug a power lead into it as well, but nothing else. And you can see it's launched. So let's go for the web browser and type in that same web address. Nothing happens. Okay, so maybe it doesn't auto start. So I've seen in here startup behavior to change the default startup settings, edit the config file. So let's copy that and open a terminal sudo nano and then paste that in. Okay, I might need to maximize this because there's loads of things in here. Camera number. HDMI preview, there's so many settings. Auto start, standard idle. Oh, it's on standard. Motion detection is false. Okay, well let's change that to true. Yeah, it does say auto start. So let's control X and yes and enter to store that. And let's reboot. Okay, so it is working now. Uh, if I go into uh, download videos and images, you can see that it's been capturing in my garden. And I'll show you how I've set it up. Uh, basically, I was trying to use Wi-Fi before, couldn't get Wi-Fi to work. Um, but to be fair, I haven't tried for a long time because I was messing around doing something else this morning. Uh, the remote control is just to prop up the Pi so that it's pointing out into my garden. But uh, yeah, I've cheated a bit because I've resorted to an ethernet cable. I'll be definitely playing around with this more. Uh, if anybody's got a tip on how to get it working on the Wi-Fi, I'd appreciate it. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.